Hello. Welcome to Arun in Denmark podcast, a podcast for foreigners living in Denmark. Today in our show we have a special guest, a guest that I was looking forward to have for a very long time. Uh, he's none other than Yohani and uh, with Yohani we will have uh, a lot of talk around two major segments. Number 1 being life as an expat in Denmark. Segment number 2 will be around fitness and health. Um Yohani welcome to the show. Arun, a pleasure to be in your show. A pleasure to um indulge in a wonderful experience that you have as an expat here and uh, as well as myself and your audience. Yeah. And as well as to share in some of the uh fitness and health uh views um based on my personal experience. uh and with myself as well as with with as my profession so yeah. looking forward to a great conversation with you sure yohani so uh, as you can see there are two segments but before we dive into the segments i would like to know more about uh, you as a person uh, give us a short little introduction about you well um arun i um i'm originally from the dominican republic uh american by passport but by route uh from the caribbean warm weather individual uh with um long extended family and tasty food <laughs> uh, so uh that is one of my route and um the second one is i was raised in the states in new york city went to school there and mm. during my high school as well as my university years and then a life took turn in which i was um had the opportunity to work in geneva switzerland so we took that opportunity went to geneva switzerland spent there several years working um in the fitness industry as well as a uh, freelancing for the well health organization which is based in geneva switzerland uh and then 10 years ago then uh life took me to a wonderful beautiful Denmark uh and this is where I have been for the last 10 years eight of those years I spent uh working for the United Nations here in Copenhagen uh with the good health and well-being department and uh, that uh, been uh fitness and health and nutrition has been at the cornerstone of my life my professional life and as well as my personal life so it's something that i share it uh very very well uh personally and and publicly as well so hence why we're here today uh yeah. hoping to share some of those stories and um so in the last 10 years i i have been here and enjoying uh live as an expat with its challenges as well as with benefits and hopefully we can delve into some of those things today of course uh, we will be delving into these topics before uh, we we talk about uh, your journey in denmark why fitness and health and how did this happen uh, is it did it happen while you were in um, uh, united states or is it something that you uh, uh, found an opportunity uh, while you were in Geneva so how did it all happen well it happened um i guess in retrospect um it happened at uh, early stage of my life i was very hyperactive and i have noticed that in order for me to maintain a great level of concentration then that energy needs to be used so that i used it to play baseball and to play basketball to play all Uh, any kind of sport accessible to me at the time um and then through that then i find enjoyment through it enjoyment through it because it was something that brought on um joy in terms of socialization meeting new people mm-hmm. but also in terms of changing my physiology uh, as well as my psychological state on which i can interpret sit down for longer times in a concentration state rather than to be jiggery uh because there's too much energy to be used that was transformative for me because then i used that as a tool mm-hmm. 
to uh, to enhance my health, but also to enhance my concentration and to go further in life. Uh, through that, then, uh, but I um, was aiming at becoming a more a political science kind of guy, which I um, went to school for a political science, did a master in political science in New York City. Uh, so, but then, um, but it was, it worked out wonderfully because then I worked in political science or international relations and in good health and well-being. So then that blended well working for the United Nations or for the World Health Organization, which is a, a political or international organization, but with my aim at good health and well-being. So, um, um, the, the, the stars aligned, uh, uh, in my favor in this case. Mm. So, uh, and that's what led me to pursue a career in good health and well-being. I think, uh, it's a prime example of, uh, following your passion, right? You have a master's in political science, but you still prefer or pursued your passion towards uh, fitness and professional uh, you are a professional athlete and i i could already see by looking at your linkedin and facebook profile um, you're still actively participating in all these international events you travel a lot uh, playing even today baseball and stuff uh, walk us through uh, what do you do as, a, as as an expat in denmark these days how do you engage your life what do you do outside uh, yeah in the weekends or in general mm-hmm. yeah. yeah as an expat uh first of all in the professional setting i now still working as a, a good health and well-being and nutritional coach so i run uh, my own business now um okay. i'm not longer working as an employee for the united nations but i still do some freelancing for them in mm-hmm. fact, a lot of my clients are from the UN uh, and from the World Health Organization. So this is, I still remain with a close tie with them. And in terms of that, and that is what I do. So I provide um, nutritional guidelines, uh, fitness guidelines, and some, some life advices to individuals so they can um, live a healthier life so more vibrant life on which they can have less restrictions when it comes to um, enjoying their everyday life. I said um, some of my friends love to hike. If they want to go hiking, then less they have no restriction of going hiking because they are in a position physically and mentally to uh, endure or face or enjoy hiking, mm-hmm. skiing, or um, gymnastic or uh, fitness, if they so choose to do that. Uh, on the other hand, of course, I still have other other friends and acquaintances on which they prefer um, not to do these activities, but not because they do not enjoy these activities, because the level of fitness right, mm-hmm. does not allow them to do these kind of activities without extreme effort and perhaps the possibility of embarrassment. Mm. So um, this is just some one of the key points on which we can um, really focus on taking care of our health, mm-hmm. not just for boundary sake, mm-hmm. and not just for the activities mentioned around, but mm-hmm. also for us ourselves, so for us to be a more service to others. The better we are physically, mm-hmm. the better we are mentally, the better we are psychologically, and for some mm-hmm. of us, the better we are spiritual, the mm-hmm. better we serve ourselves, mm-hmm. our friends, our family, and society as a whole. Now, in contrast, mm-hmm. if that is the opposite, mm-hmm. then we will, be, we will be doing a disservice to all that area mentioned. Mm-hmm. And um, so through my career and through my personal lives, uh, mm-hmm. and you are um, an example of that because we met on a social setting. Exactly. And um, and then we um, shared uh, wonderful values or, or family values, a career path. Uh, you're also an international, you're also in an international environment, mm-hmm. and you're also in an international company. 
So therefore, uh, we have all this. We're also interested in communicating. Mm. Uh, as you are communicating all these wonderful experiences to expat uh, in here. So uh, then uh, we communicated on, on, on those spaces and it was easy for us to communicate and to, and to interact and to get to know each other. But then you mentioned that you wanted to improve some areas of your life. And, exactly. and I mentioned to you that I wanted to improve some area of my life. And that was a wonderful interaction on which uh, we both benefit. Uh, and, yeah. and now I, I am delighted to see you so healthy, so strong, so elegant. <laughs> so uh, although, although much it took a lot of, my, of effort. Of course, it takes a lot of effort. I think much uh, appreciation to you and people like you because I think I attracted the like, like-minded people in my circle and I spent most of my time um getting these uh, motivations uh, in the form of fitness uh, gurus like you and also well wishers um, i'm i'm lucky to be surrounded with them uh, i wanted to touch upon this important element about um, um physical well being and also mental well being you are so passionate about uh, these elements um while you are with un um, i think it's the same you had a flourishing career um, why choose a profession um, which is of course venturing from you and to an independent uh, fitness coach or training what made you decide that you want to do it as a an independent uh, consultant or fitness trainer what what was the trigger what was the reason the reasons are multiple um mm-hmm. and but one of the main reason was the constraint that comes along with the un Uh, mm-hmm. on which you are not allowed, perhaps if I were to have this postcard, then I would have to mm-hmm. have written concerns. And then so there's this some diplomatic uh, tape barriers mm-hmm. uh, that, that, does, that does not allow you to freely expose and then mm-hmm. express yourself and talk to people and then pass that knowledge to others so they can embrace that commitment to themselves without mm. having to be asking permissions all the time makes sense that's one of the things uh also it's, it's it's a very political uh, institution uh mm. and it's wonderful institutions uh and i had a wonderful time with them as well um but unfortunately it, it was time for me to explore it i have been there already for almost 10 years so it's yeah. time for me to explore it uh different horizon and and mm. see it if i can well uh make it on my own uh it's like moving out of the house for my parents mm-hmm. uh okay it's a wonderful it's a wonderful career it, it's fun it's comfortable uh but i can also reach i can only reach this much mm. i can only reach the un personnel right there in copenhagen mm. how about the rest of the world How about those children and those people over there in my native Dominican Republic on mm. which I'm working hand to hand with them in which I am sponsoring some um projects in there yeah. on good health and well-being that's something that would not be able to be done within the UN protocol mm-hmm. um so so this is some that's, that's that's some of the reasons on which um and also it was not a total divorce it was not a total separation so i'm still freelancing for them uh mm-hmm. once in a while i'm still servicing some some other employees are my clients mm-hmm. and um so it's it's still a close tie but i the benefit is that i am able to run my own business to help every individual the mm. way i see it fit mm. it's a sense of freedom let's put it that way that is exactly what i was about to ask you that gives you the freedom to explore uh, different avenues different potential opportunities right as an expat uh, when i think about let's say pursuing my passion pursuing my uh, career as an entrepreneur or independent consulting I always had the chills because back in India I come from India and I back in India I I tried uh, business but I don't think uh, that would be my first choice if I move when I move to Denmark and the reason is I think about uh, what will I uh, do if I don't have the monthly salary and f- from an expat's perspective there's a lot of things going in uh, through their minds about 
first of all financials there's also element of who will be my client and and will i be able to uh, successfully uh, run this for the first one year bootstrapping with my own money what are the things that were running uh, into your mind when you thought about you know what this is the time now is the time and uh, what were your first uh, uh, what were your first uh, thoughts uh, that you 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 wanted to share if you want to <laughs> it's um i will i would like to to tell you that listen um it was all icing on the cake i was ready <laughs> to go everything came uh, as planned and i have no worry because i was confident in myself uh but no <laughs> i would be surprised <laughs> <laughs> so no so uh, as for most people there was a sense of uncertainty sense mm. of oh how come if i don't make it then yeah. what would i tell my family what would i tell my friends what would i yeah. tell those people back in the un with that i okay so you left and then you went to explore you want independence you wanted to touch people and then what so so that uncertainty was there very lively uh living with me uh for quite a long time um but um as i said you know comfort is not the place to be no. um total security is not the place to be uh we do mm. want to be secure we want certainty uh but not total mm. and and then so i decided to um to jump out of the of the chip and then i i did have a plan i do have some some life saving equipment <laughs> and um and i have some nourishment some food before i jump off the of the of the, of the ship um figuratively speaking mm. uh that kept me afloat and um, mm. but one of the things is also um i have the privilege to be staying here in Denmark whether i was with the un or not so mm. that freedom mm. allowed me to make the decision with ease so my permanent or my resident permanent is not tied to the un ah, as, okay. uh right now as it is for, for myself so that was a a freedom that so okay if i leave the un i don't have to i don't have a month to go back to the us mm, which is used to be the case i get 30 days to leave the country okay um um so so then that that was a little bit easier to mm. to move around so and then i already have a place to stay i already have some saving and and i already have a clientele okay so that that made it a little bit a lot a lot easier for me mm. to to explore an independent career a freelancing mm. career mm. um but this, but regardless of that uh, then there was also uh the concern of financial burden okay so how come if i run my savings run out and i don't mm. get enough tractions and mm. then what would happen so you have all these concerns you have those mm. worries um but those worries will be there uh if they're not there then you construct in yourself yeah as the human that we are yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> so I so but, but i'm glad i am glad that i had the freedom to mm. work um and promote good health and world mm. and well-being in mm. different part of the world mm. and as well as locally Mm. and we very with a uh, very little um political restriction mm. and uh, and that I'm still able to make a living and but also most importantly to be able to say that I I I I chose my way mm. and then I chose to impact people and to mm. help people and help myself mm. my way um and that's quite fine and that's quite fine and that's something that um that I I feel joyful about and yeah. and I hope that it will continue to flourish and to continue to multiply in that feeling through once again 
ensuring that people are living a healthier life physically yeah. and psychologically. And this no this is what I tell my friends, this is what I tell acquaintance, mm. and this is what I tell people that I still don't haven't met yet. Mm. There's no bigger investment, there's no bigger value than your physical and emotional health. Mm. Within la- within that line, you know, Socrates said that a life lived without knowing the full capacity of your physical ability mm. is a regrettable life. Um, so I like to embrace that, perhaps not literally all the time, but I would like to embrace that with some more friends, colleagues, and clients, and family that are struggling. And then, and I, to some, and some asked. Some cases, I still do not do not have the answers to mm-hmm. why people choose not to be healthier and other not. I have mm-hmm. family members who are struggling with mm-hmm. health uh, because of lifestyle lifestyle choices. Mm-hmm. I have my cousin in Germany, um, and then she's struggling with with health issues. She can hardly mm-hmm. walk, and she's um, severely overweight. And then we're trying to work out with her, um, but as you can see, it is a, it's a sensitive issue, and they have to be willing or they have to ask to be helped. And this is one of the rules that I like to apply. We can engage in a conversation, we can talk about health and fitness, but I will really tell you, well, you should do that without you telling me or asking me, Johanny, what do you think about X, Y, and Z? Mm. Um, because I don't know, I have to be respectful to you. I have to be respectful mm. to your sensitivity and to anyone who asks. And, and the fact that I have been working in this field for over two decades does not give me the right to be disrespectful to anyone or to hurt someone's feelings just because I think that they should do X. Mm. Um, so, so it's, um, it's, um, it's a, it's um, but once the person asks, then they are giving me permission for me to present some of the options that that can potentially help them in the future. Mm. And I hope that will be the case, and people will ask more often. I think I think I think the my general mindset of uh, people is that when they find the right uh, inspiration, a man or a woman uh, who who lives their life by example. i think the higher chances of trusting those people and following their principles mm-hmm. and one of the things mm-hmm. that i follow on what you what you preach to me is that um consistency staying consistent and then showing up to the gym i remember one of the incidents where you actually uh, came all the way from your home to my gym in my company and you started this uh, saying saying start simple but then do it consistently and i think you showed by example on how to do those uh, pull ups and also uh, dips uh, different variations and i still I, do that i'm i'm impressed i'm impressed that it's been such a long time and you still remember it. i, I mean do. not it not the experience but you remember the details and the exercises it, it is it matters a lot because uh, it was a busy uh, evening and then you still focused on giving some value uh, in that really narrow time and um, i i i felt like uh, i mean it did not have anything it did not expect anything in return it just showed up to teach me something and and i i, I respected then, time as well exactly and then just to repeat that and i i had a wonderful time it was a wonderful experience um because um well because first of all we were sharing time together. Yeah. Whether it was in the gym or on a coffee or on a walk, we were spending time together with people who get along well. And then in addition to that, then we have an agenda. We have an agenda or ensuring that we perform exercise in a proper way so no one mm. gets injured. And then we get the best benefit of it. Mm. And and then we want to imagine if I would just have very complicated exercises. Mm. and then uh, um and make it really really difficult mm. then you will have two problems there you will have a psychological problem and you have a physiological problem you have a physiological problem because they will be really challenging 
Mm. And then you will have severe soreness for days. Yeah. Right? You will have psychological issues because you're going to feel that you were not up to it, that you're not strong enough, that you're not fit for it. And then, therefore, that psychologically will affect your consistency. So what we did, well, we reversed those things. We made it um, doable, yet effective. Mm. Right? And then so that way you can achieve that small victory. Mm. So you can also feel that it's enjoyable. Very and important. then you feel that the other person who is on the other side cares about you or n not where you want to be, where you are right now, at the yeah. beginning stage, at the born rule stage. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, when we need a helping hand and mm. then when we have to ensure that that person, sorry, psyche or that person, emotional state is sheltered, that is protected because yeah. it's very sensitive at times, because you are in an environment that is not your environment. You yeah. are in a position that is sensible. Yeah. You, we feel when we're in the gym for the first time, or we are having been in the gym, we're not a gym person. We mm. feel that we, 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 we've been observed. Mm. I agree. And then we want to do the best possible, and we want to make sure that, uh, that, that um, each step, so each exercise that we know already, because we're afraid of being embarrassed. Yeah. So what I do is I just fix those things. I tell some jokes. I tell them, listen, we're going to have a good time. It's irrelevant how you do and so on and so forth. So I make you think that it's nothing. It's fine that we're having a good time. But I do have my agenda behind it. But yeah. I want to make sure that, that you feel comfortable and that you that, that the person feel that regardless of what happened, the person there cares tremendously about you, whether we just met or whether we know each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes a difference. I think that what makes a difference. That's why um, a lot of oh, my clients and companies get um, excellent results mm -hmm. most of the time um, because of the personal touch. Exactly. Okay? I, I, think I don't... You're, I don't you're... Johanny, one second. One I don't second. come there as an athlete. I don't come there as an expert. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Johanny. I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, I had limited power to my laptop. Yeah, mm -hmm. continue. Mm -hmm. So um, so I don't come. I don't. I don't. I don't approach an individual or a group or a company as an athlete or who have competed in multiple places around the world or as an expert who has worked in the field for over 20 years and has worked for the United Nations for WHO and so on and so forth. No, I come there as a human being who is in love with what he does and he would like to see you a little bit better. The thing that I actually uh, like about your approach of personal training is that the personal touch that you mentioned. Because in my journey... Um, I tried apps, I tried uh, working out uh, with advices people give, but I really lacked that accountability factor. And that accountability factor is what is the gap that you're trying to fill being a fitness coach who is taking care of the person, personalized care and what he needs and also addressing his psychological uh, needs. And I think that is a huge uh, market in terms of uh, in terms of uh, fitness and also in many areas. It can also be learning a language because what I'm trying to connect here is that when I studied uh, Danish classes, of course we have textbooks, we have a lot of videos to watch, but what really motivated me and helped me uh, progress is actually accountability. I, I had someone next to me who does the job like you're doing with fitness. So what I'm trying to ask you is, this is a huge uh, necessity in a country like Denmark where people are willing to um, um, pay for services uh, to have a personalized uh, training who have uh, an accountability factor. How do you see this? Uh, what, what, do you, what do your clients uh, basically need? Uh, is it like just the psychological support or is it also like um, nutritional stuff? And what else do you care? clients need 
from from your uh, yeah from your coach coachings uh, yeah. Um, it, it varies it varies depending on the individual uh, it varies depending whether I work with, with groups or, mm -hmm. or individuals uh, alone most of my coaching is one on one mm -hmm. or um, with companies but mostly one on one mm -hmm. and and it varies yet again regardless. Mm -hmm. the, the individual. We have some motivated individuals who are um, really just want to know what they need to do in order to ensure that they run the marathon that they said they were going to run 20 years ago. Commitment. And they have yet to do so. Um, <laughs> we have others. <laughs> we have others who are uh, well, super good athletes, uh, mm -hmm. and I was uh, the elite wrestling over there at my university mm. and and now I am 30 kilos overweight and I haven't stepped in the gym in uh, since my uh, college graduation 27 years ago uh, mm. <laughs> and then we have others who are in great shape mm. right? but then they perhaps lack some flexibility they uh, have endured some injuries mm. and then we have to personalize programs in order to ensure that the injuries get better mm. and at the same time to ensure that they don't produce new injuries. Mm. Um, and then we have others who just want to ensure that they wake up knowing that there's a personal trainer, a nutritionist waiting for them at 845. And if mm. they don't come over there, then they're mm. going to disappoint that person, plus mm. they're going to lose their money. Mm. So that also an accountability issue that you said. Mm. Right? Also, when we have a protocol in which we say, listen, we're going to train for six months, we're going to use these mm. programs, and we're going to just variate the programs accordingly as, uh, as you unfold your goal, get mm. closer, and then you get stronger and more flexible and so on mm. and so forth. So now within the psyche, they have a framework, mm. a framework of what they want to achieve mm. within time frames that they would like to achieve it. Okay. So that clear the path a little bit. Mm. It clear the fog. Okay. Six months, this is what I want to do. Mm. And then how are we going to get there? And then I decide the map of how to get there. Mm. So now, now we have how to get there. Mm. Mm. What is it that we're going to achieve? Mm -hmm. And with, the one, with what time frames are we going to achieve it? So now they are excited. Mm. Now they are that child waiting mm. the next before because the next day it is a school trip and they're going to have a great time <laughs> with their friends. Mm. And then this is one other uh, engagement that we mm. or uh, motivation that keep them going. Mm. Um, another way that, what, that I use is that, listen, we this is the only vehicle that we have. There's mm. not all the body around there that we can just go and say, like, listen, can I replace that body? No, this is the oh. only vehicle that we have. And then we have to take to ensure that that vehicle, that vehicle is taken care of. Yeah. Right. So it can serve you and it can serve others. Mm. So now these are all because I love my, I have a sweet tooth. No, no, you chose to have a sweet tooth. And then you have it for the last 20 years. So of course you have a sweet tooth. Because every time I just have sugar, I get, I get cravings and I get shakes. Of course you do. Because we have sugar addiction. We have alcohol addiction, we have drug additions, and and we have other kind other other additions. Uh, we have gambling with so on and so forth. So whatever triggers that dopamine mm. in your brain, mm. all right, and then you would like to have a little bit more of that. So if you I, have I sugar, think uh, I think I, I could add a point here. I have a sweet tooth as well. I, I, I yeah. work out every single day. I uh, stay true to my uh, routines, but I still feel like I'm not completely uh, got rid of, uh, ridden of uh, the uh, 
not crazy the but uh, the sugar uh, it could be let's say dark chocolates it could also be oats sometimes uh, with chocolate flavor and i drink a mm-hmm. uh, protein powder with a chocolate flavor for some reason i i have the flair for uh, having chocolate on everything <laughs> but well, but that's I... <laughs> not that's not too that's not that's not too bad it's uh, yeah. once again it's the the long term effect and mm. the long term accumulative, accumulative effect mm. or specific behaviors mm. um chocolate is a great source of vitamin e okay it's a great antioxidant yeah. right it uh has a good source of fat as well but depending Seriously? on what kind of chocolate is yeah okay. so it's depending what kind, of, what kind of chocolate you mean the milk chocolate or the dark chocolates uh the dark chocolate they both have okay The milk chocolate of course has the sugar it has the milk and has other products mm. which are damaging to your health but the, okay. the chocolate that it has in there it still has some of the, some, some of the elements of that okay. but at, a, at the at a lower level mm. now if you get a dark chocolate then you are reducing some of the extra mm. and increasing some of the positive that mm. i just mentioned okay so um so just buy your all dark chocolates and enjoy it yeah You know, it's a, now the, if you buy a bag of candy this mm. big, and then you have it back just a bag every day, ten years, fifteen years, then you're gonna have five, ten kilos extra. Exactly. <laughs> This doesn't apply if you were to have an extra pizza or mm. burger or fries. Mm. And what I tell my clients is. When you're going to eat, make sure that you eat what your body needs first. Mm. The healthy stuff. Mm. Vegetables, good fat, and proteins. Mm. And it's always better to have the protein first mm. for multiple reasons. First mm. of all, the the proteins is satisfy you more. Mm. Satiate your hunger more. Mm. So if you already eating your proteins, mm. fish, meat, tofu for those people yeah. who are vegan or vegetarians. Yeah. Then then it's hard to eat all that protein because it's just, you know, imagine when you have instead of having a whole plate of rice, beans, vegetables, meat, then you will have just meat. That would be a tall order to achieve. Mm. Because it's a lot it's so satisfying it's so satiating so then i it i preferred or i suggest that they will have their protein first mm. then then they have vegetables and then they will have the carbohydrate last why mm. the carbohydrate last because it has less of a glycemic impact mm. or hike okay Right? So right. sugar and simple carbohydrates last, mm. right? Mm. And then because also after you have eaten your proteins mm. as well as your f- healthy fat and vegetables, mm-hmm. then the room for your chocolates they will be limited. Yeah. I think uh we we covered enough about um health and also the fitness part. I actually thought of asking you this question. You also play professional sports. You're engaging a lot with professional sports as well. In the recent times, I've heard some news. Uh, walk us through on your journey with uh, traveling to play baseball, or I've also seen you win medals. Talk about that. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, bringing that up. Um, you know, that's something that I don't talk about often. <laughs> But, uh, but but I remember you asking me. Uh, yes, uh, I had the pleasure um, to play for multiple teams. So I okay. played um, for the Belgium national teams. I played for the Croatian national teams. For the okay. I played for France. For France, I played for Switzerland. How is it possible? It, you become a, a national part of a national team. Is it even possible? it's not it's not it's it's not they have different competition depending on the in the competitions okay so when you have national clubs mm. or national competition on which is all nationals okay then you have to be on that 
what they have mm. is international competition on which okay. is not national. So just headless mm. club on Marseille is going to compete in uh, um, in Brisbane in Australia. Okay. They just bring a, a team from France. Mm. So what they do is, depending on the rules and depending on the tournaments, they allow two or three reinforcements. Okay. So so that that I think that also is um, it's um, applicable in cricket. Okay. As well, depending on the on on the tournament. Okay. So when they hire somebody to come over there at for for a test in in three three day test in some over there, so so um, so then that that that's what um that's what that's has that's how it's done without having to be a national, depending mm. on the tournament yet again. So I also play in Australia, and then I play for the Brisbane Falcons in Australia. Okay. And there was the, um, uh, the Pan Pacific Games, which is a biennium games uh, mm-hmm. with almost 50,000 competition. So it's oh similar to the Olympics, in which they have uh, uh, multiple disciplines. So this over there I was playing baseball, softball, which is almost the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then we got gold medal. We won gold medal over there in Brisbane. Uh, that was in 2020. Uh, two, all right, okay. almost two years ago, mm-hmm. uh, and then the same year we have uh, the European Championship, uh, mm-hmm. and this time I was playing for uh, Denmark, wow. and we also and we also won gold medal there. So, so uh, it was interesting because I needed to travel to Australia, mm-hmm. uh, actually first to Barcelona where, it, where the games were being held here, the European Championships for the Masters. And um, and then I went. We play, spent a week there playing. We played the finals on Saturday. On Sunday, I flew back to Denmark, and on Monday, I flew to a 24 hours travel. Got there to the airport, and then um, had to stay in the airport for a few hours until uh, some of their colleagues came, uh, came to to pick me up. So it was quite a journey. Uh, uh, rest. Rested, hardly rested, and play the next day. We play well, we won, and then at the end of the tournament, at the end of ten days, we end up winning a gold medal. So, um, so that was quite rewarding. Uh, I remember you asking me um, when I got back. You know, oh, what did you do? I was like, I went playing and so on. I didn't mention anything, and eventually you overheard uh, some conversation. It's like, hey, but I heard that you won this and won that. So. <laughs> So uh, so yeah, it's um, I have had a long career in sport, uh, and I've been blessed to stay um, healthy to do so, uh, even at this advanced age. <laughs> um, and then I would like to continue, perhaps playing a little bit, but uh, most importantly, uh, passing on the knowledge of good health and well-being to uh, friends, families, and. Uh, and hopefully, as many um, as many as are, are, are those people around the world that are willing to have an open ears to um, to hear uh, the gospel of good health and well being. Uh, I remember I used to play uh, badminton in the weekends, and uh, I think the fun uh, participating in these sport activities is that you also <laughs> end up making new friends, uh, being in another country. Walk us through your journey on how many friends do you have in Denmark? What are the activities do you do you do perform together? It's not just sports, basically. Whatever activities do you uh, you perform after uh, during the weekends, uh, and what are the social activities that you actively engage in in Denmark? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I heard many uh, experts saying that it's hard to make friends in Denmark, especially with Danes and so on, and uh, I. To most people, yes. <laughs> uh, it has not been the case with me. And and okay. that is precisely because of what you just mentioned. Mm. You mentioned that you used to play badminton. And through that, there was a social environment, a social component mm. within that allow mm. you to build friendships or relationships, you know, and, and make that uh, not just a sport, but also... Mm. Uh, a social uh, gathering at times. That mm. has been exactly my case um, since mm. I 
got here, I was playing organized sport, uh, baseball, mm. softball. And in addition to that, I was coaching. And most of the mm. children were also Danes or some international. Okay. And then some of my teammates are also mostly Danes. So that allowed me a window for me to build mm. friendships in uh, mm. with other uh, non expat. Um, so so that that has been uh, a, a great way for for not only to play the sport that I like, but also to build uh, new friendships, um, mm. and which I still have since I, since I got here. Some of the sports that I also play, some of the activities that I go into the weekends are, uh, first, we'd uh, love to go out for walks. So we go out for walks to different parts, not just around the neighborhood, not just in in mm. Copenhagen, but we'd go up to walks um, in other areas. That way, we walk, we exercise, but we also get to know other places in Denmark. And I think it's a fabulous mm. way for people to explore all the cities, mm. parks, and what this country has to offer. Mm. Other activities that I do, depending on uh, the season, but during uh, now in the summer season is uh, go to the beach or um, mm. uh, play softball and baseball, and um, mm. as well as uh, love to go to the Louisiana Museum, uh, okay. not only because of the great exhibitions that they have, that, but, all, but mostly because uh, we do it as a day trip and mm. uh, and because of the surrounding beautiful gardens around it so we can just sit down mm. have brunch outside mm. while we enjoy some cultural uh, events and also with my children I have uh, two uh, two wonderful children here with me and an other who lives abroad and uh, it's a good way for us to spend some time together learn about some culture and while mm. enjoy the beautiful setting outside when the weather mm. cooperates. Winter times is a little bit more challenging, evidently for most mm. for, for myself and all, most of us here. Um, mm. So um, we, we do travel at times during the winter time, we go skiing. So we go skiing mm. and um, we'll go to warm places. So that's mm. some of the, the activities that we do. But also conduct walks. Walks, uh, is, uh, it's a great way to to entertain ourselves during the winter months uh, what what uh, is your uh, favorite uh, spot that you have go to, uh, to walk or perform outdoor activities um i prefer the i prefer the outdoor activities the more I, my favorite would be softball uh you know baseball softball which is a mm -hmm. similar sport that would that's the first one the second would be the, uh fitness itself I go into the but gym in Denmark, and lift the weights. Yeah, in, in Denmark, if you want to suggest uh, for the expats what, watching this uh, podcast, um, suggest a few places that, that they could go sign up or just show up and then take a run. What are the spots that you prefer? Yeah, yeah listen, so there's also, there's, there's walks, but also those who prefer running. So we have, you know, the Spartan the Spartan uh, Club right here in um, yeah. Phelan Parking, uh, which is quite popular way for beginners advanced intermediates in advance so i mm. would suggest that those people who would like to enroll in running and have never run that's a great way mm. to go about it they are uh, open to to all and uh and it's a very 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 um convenience way to exercise mm. to learn how to do it how to run well and prevent injuries and to know to meet new expat and non expats so that's that's a good suggestion mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. well as uh, there's also um, some walking clubs that uh, that are exploring walking clubs that um, people can just um, register and then they take you for mm -hmm. a nice walking tour around so uh, you get exercise mm -hmm. you get to know new people and then you get mm -hmm. to know the city so I highly suggest that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, but uh, Johanny, I think we discussed a lot of stuff uh, starting from a journey from uh, United States to uh, to the European uh, uh, countries, couple of countries, and then uh, your journey with fitness and health. 
and also your current uh, uh, sports that you're being performing uh, and traveling abroad uh, thank you so much for pa- being part of the podcast uh, it was a pleasure having you on the show um for for those who are watching this uh, podcast uh, subscribe and share uh, with your friends and families and uh, any last words yohani that you want to convey to the audiences who are watching this podcast before we yeah end. well first of all delighted to be here with you arum i think that you are opening the doors for many of us expats in here so thank you for uh, your contribution to make our life here in denmark a little bit better uh, and then uh, to all of your viewers and to all of the guard um, there's no price for your health so if you enjoy walking Important. go walking if you enjoy running go running if you enjoy fitness do it consistently enjoy it find some friends find someone get a youtube channel doesn't matter how it doesn't <laughs> have to be uh it doesn't have to be expensive it can be free as well and just make sure that we should show a little bit more care for ourselves so we can show a little bit more care to the world so that's my message for myself and to others thank you again johani have a good one <laughs>